<clears throat> so we're making it short and sweet, man, because this is uh, so a lot of stuff to talk about today. Because today I, I had great plans coming into the day. And NVC, you know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna nail this one trade. Um, and I did. I posted a chart in the room. I charted it at like 980 something, covered down to 920. So let me start off with that stock right there. It's because that's the stock that basically screwed everything up for me. Screwed everything up for me. And NVC, I was, you know, I started the day really great. I was probably up like two grand on that stock. I covered out. And then what I did was this. You guys ever see, you ever see uh, the deadliest catch when you're uh, the crab fisherman? Okay, so the way the crab fishermen guys work, the deadliest catch, okay, they're, they're catching crab legs. <laughs> so this is a great uh, analogy here. So they go to Alaska and they start catching crabs, right? And what they do is they have like 200 pots. What a pot is, is a cage. It's a, it's a rectangular cage that you drop in the bottom of the ocean with bait in it so that crabs can come into it. They call it a pot, which is basically like a cage, right? And so, they, so the way they do do it this, they test out some some test strings, they call it. So a string consists of maybe, you know, a group of like 50 pots in a row, whatever, right? And so it's a string of pots. And there's two ways to do it. One is just to dump all your pots down on the bottom of the ocean and hope you get crab. But what happens is this, what if you fail? Then you're gonna end up having to re-pick up those 200 pots, restack them, move them to a different location. So what they do is they do a little spot test. They drop maybe 25 pots down and they come back and they see if that spot is good, you know? And so by doing that, there's a pros and cons, okay? Spot testing is okay. Well, they have to spot test, you know? It's, so they, they basically gotta wait. It's a waiting game. But what that does is this, they, they don't overcommit. They don't drop all their pots and now they're stuck a week trying to re-pick up the pots because it takes like entire, like dude, it takes days to pick up a pot, right? Each pot they can do it in maybe five minutes. And you have two, so that's a hundred, dude, that's, they have 200 pots. So it's like a thousand, you know, 1,000 a minute. So, okay, whatever that comes out to. So, so that's what I did today, dude. So what I did was I spot tested and NVC. I made money. I was up like two grand, whatever the hell. The, you know, when the, when the day started, I was like, oh shit, I'm up with two grand already. I really don't look at P&L. I just place my trades and then I execute. And then I, when it's done, I look over, right? So I'm still spot testing NNVC. So I didn't really size up yet. I had maybe 7,000 shares allocated to NNVC that I could use. And I've used maybe only half of that. So, so what happened is this, I, I made money. I was like, holy crap, there's crap down here. I'm making money. But what I did wrong was this guys. I dropped all my pots really quickly, right back. I didn't give it room for the crap to move around. Because NNVC, so the, the error here was this. NNVC is a low floater. It's, it, it fucking scapped up huge. It's known to be a stock that's very manipulative. And it's right at the open. So I, I took a big gamble and I dropped all my puffs down, dude. So I made my money and then I started to scale really quickly back at 950, 970. One. And next year I turned around. I wasn't even looking because I was trading way too many stocks at the time. I woke up, I was like, holy shit, there's so many fucking stocks. I'm, I got really excited. And, and, and I just kind of like, I, it, it, when, when, when there's too many stocks running, I, I, I am a greedy motherfucker, dude. I tell you right now, that's my mistake. I am so greedy, I want to trade everything. So I ended up, you know, it worked. I made two grand on that NNVC, so I dropped all my pots down. Way too early. Next thing I turn around, I'm down a dollar a share. Okay, it hits 1060 or whatever the hell it hits, right? And I, I didn't even see it hit, by the way, because I was trading nine other stocks. I had like nine other positions out open, right? I had probably traded like almost eight to ten positions, and it was just stupid. I was like, fuck, I, I was so greedy because because I had a cushion. Once again, it was the cushion game, right? And so I dropped all my fucking pots. And I took it, so I turned a $2,000 winner into like a $4,000 loser. By, by basically dropping all my pots and then spot tests and do, that's because I was, my focus was not on that stock. I thought I had a clear winner. In trading, you can never turn your back to that stock just for one minute. One minute is an eternity. 
During that one minute, I turned my back to NNVC. It's fucking jumped out to 1060. And that's where a lot of people got stopped out and stuff. So I, I was like, holy crap. So I was stuck in that stuff for two on two accounts. And so when it came back down to 10 bucks, I took it off. And I basically just cried. So I turned basically, I was up two grand to down like maybe for the day now, three grand. So it was like a $5,000 swing, whatever the hell it was, right? And I'm like, holy fuck. So that's, and then that caused me to do a lot of things. That FOMO, because I had cushion. I traded a pre-market, I had cushion, I was up on the stock. GMDA, GMDA. 750 was the line. I have no idea why I started at seven, under $7. I had so much FOMO, because I'm like, dude, I had cushion, and next thing you know, it just swept everybody. It jumped up right to the line where it's supposed to be. I was like, fuck, dude, it got to 750. But the problem was this, okay? This is how, this is the lesson I want to teach you guys. The lesson is, no matter how long you've been trading and stuff, dude, when the frenzy comes, when, when, when your brain gets all jacked up, even though, so I lost all confidence at that point. I was like, NVC fucking ripped the dollar up. Fucking, I, I, I lost back like four or five grand on that stock. And all I can see is this. I've seen negative, like all these negative scenarios can happen on GMDA. I'm like, what if this shit ripped up $2? Now I'm going to be down 10 grand on the day. I don't want to be like that. And so I was like, fuck, dude. So I stopped out where I initially was supposed to enter. 750 line is where the watch list was, where Alex was, where all the members of MIC was. For some reason, I started at $7. So when 750 hit, I was like, fuck, I'm already down 50 cents. So I got out. So I ended up losing $2,000 on that stock. So here I am sitting on a $2,000 loser on GMDA with, then I turn around, GMDA drops a dollar. If I had just had patience, patience guys, waiting for the line to hit. If it doesn't hit, I don't make money, but that's fine. The problem is when you're FOMOing like I did, when you fucking lose, you're gonna get your ass beat. And usually what happens is this, it's always gonna go back to where you thought it would go. If I didn't have FOMO and I just placed my fantasy orders at 750, I look around, I'm down, I'm up a dollar instead of being down 50 cents. So FOMO is the killer, guys. And so the, that's what separates people that are learning for the first time. When with I have really bad habits, man. I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of bad habits I have. And so the key to trading is this. We, we already identified the winning strategies. We know what is proven. That You guys are already ahead of the curve. Okay, we taught you the process around winning strategies. When I started trading, I didn't know what a winning strategy was. It was trial and error. And so that's where my bad habits come from. The trial and error of adding to a loser, fighting a stock, thinking that the stock is like trying to trick me. Stupid crap like that. Conspiracy theories where, oh, market makers can see my stops and they're going to fucking come after my fucking stop. Market makers don't give a damn about your 200 shares that you're trying to do a stop loss on guys seriously they don't give a fuck you know you you need to put the stop loss in and not worry about the conspiracy theory because they don't really give a damn about your thousand dollars and if they come for you you're putting it into a, an area of stopping out that everybody else is stopping out at okay you you cannot go with the herd so i did exactly what the herd did on gmda I fucking stopped out at the 750 when I should be entering like my plan. I panicked. That's because I had a I just got whooped on NNVC. I got whooped on NNVC once again, but I dropped all my pots early. You cannot do that, guys. You have to slowly scale in and you just can't assume that the stock is going to go your way. I thought NNVC was going to go down to $8 cuz it went down to 9 909 or something like that. And I was like, okay, please bounce to 950. So I dropped all my pots around 950, 970. Next thing you know, boom, it's at 1060. And I'm like, holy crap. And so, so I did, so when that happens, you know, I, I panic. I'm like, dude, what if they did the same at GMDA? So these are the things that it goes through a normal trader's mind. I mean, I'm not a fucking, I am not a psychic. I, 
I mean, I know this GMDA is supposed to go to 750, it's supposed to go down to 650. And it did, did, it did do that. But when you are early, when you are upside down, all the negative shit goes through your head, guys. It's the fear. The reason I have the fear is because I don't know what my loss is. I did not predefine my loss on GMDA, guys, because I, I thought for sure I was gonna make money. So I came into GMDA breaking, deviating from the process. So the process is always this, guys. You have to predefine your risk. Predefine your risk means you know where you're gonna enter, where you're gonna take the loss. I didn't even think I was gonna lose on GMDA because that is a setup I've seen a hundred times and 95 out of the hundred, I make money. But the problem is you have to have proper timing. I cannot be early. If I'm early, I will stop out. So 750 line was very obvious. You know, people think it won't get there, but it got there. It always gets there, guys. And so I deviated from my process. I did not predefine my risk. So if I predefine my risk and thought about it, I was like, about, if you're entering at $7 and you want to get to 750, that's 50 cent move. You shouldn't drop all your pots. Maybe do a thousand share order and then add the rest at 750. So I'm only down 400 instead of fucking dropping like 5,000 shares and, and already getting upside down. So what I did was, dude, I did not predefine my risk. Okay, this is very common. When you do not predefine your risk, fear comes out. Fear is because of the unknown. But if you predefine your risk, you know exactly how much you're willing to lose. How can you be fearful? So I was fearful because I did not predefine my risk. And then when it happened, I just panicked. I panicked. Now this is the problem with most traders, guys. Traders that are not putting in stops, that are not predefining their risk, do not understand this concept. It's very simple in life. If well, The only reason you're fearful for anything in life is the unknown. But if you know, how can you be fearful, right? So this is the secret, guys. The secret is to predefine your risk so that you do not be scared. When the time comes, you can act on it. Why am I entering $7? If I'd enter $7, I would have stopped out at $7.50 like everybody else. But the ones that are learning MIC and being disciplined are shorting where I am stopping out because they do not have that FOMO. So after that happened, and after seeing GMDA did exactly what I wanted to do, going down a dollar from 750, I could have done two things. Cried, broke my keyboard, went to sleep, <laughs> or whatever, right? But I, I was like, you know what, man? I'm gonna calm the fuck down. The reason why I calmed the fuck down, because even though I took the losses on NNVC and GMDA, they were manageable losses, guys. I had a cu little cushion that I was manageable, so I ended up losing, shit, 16, wait, like $1,700 on GMDA and probably about that same back on NNVC. So yeah, I gave back a good portion of the chunk. And so I was red on the day. So I went from a nice green to a, to a nice red on the day. But it was still a manageable red because I stopped out. I had the foresight to actually stop out. And so it's fine. If I lose 3,000, it's just a days of work for me, right? So I kept it to a minimum. I was down like three grand, which is a day of work for me. So at least I did that right. I planned my size so that I don't lose more than a day of work. So that was the one good thing I did. The one good thing I did was I didn't locate and start scaling infinite size. I had a max size in mind and I kept on it. And that's what preserved my mental capital as well as my, my money capital. And then what happens when I saw like, okay, I'm, I'm still recoverable. That's, that's not that bad of a loss. And it's still only 10 minutes in the day. Only 10 fucking minutes in the day, 15 minutes, right guys? And so I kept my losses manageable and I worked it back. So now I am probably, I think I'm close to $3,000 up for the day. So it was a crazy ass, stupid ass swing. So I thought it was really red. I traded like crap, but then I went back to my process. Once I calmed the fuck down, I stopped having FOMO because I can't afford FOMO anymore. So I'm gonna tell you exactly why I was able to recover. This is the difference between you guys learning from me and learning from a furu. What a furu would do is revenge trade. I see this all the time. They'd be down $15,000. How the fuck are you even down that much? It's because you're fighting and you're fighting. You don't have a process. The key to all this 
is a process. If you have a process, you can always, if you deviate from that process, guys, you can go back to your process and make that act of money. But if you're just winging it, these guys are just winging it. When they're down 15 grand, what they do is they doubled up. Revenge trade. They got out of that trade. Oh, I'm fucking, uh, I, I, I recovered half of the gains. Now let me revenge trade again. It's the old Martingale system, right? Where blackjack Martingale, where if you lose one hand, you double up the next hand. You lose that, you double out that. Eventually you win back, right? Eventually you're gonna win back. Yeah, but the problem is if you lose 10 hands in a row, you're gonna go bankrupt. Or even four hands in a row at, at big, big trading sizes, right? Eventually you're gonna blow up. That's that that Martin Gale, the doubling up shit, revenge training, I call it revenge training, does not fucking work. It works every time until that one time you lose. And then you never be heard from again. You go bankrupt. But even worse than that, what are you teaching members? You teaching members to fucking trade like a fucking like a fucking idiot? I don't want to single out anybody, but if you see people revenge training and being happy that they're down a shitload of money. Then you see them start trading a million dollar positions, half a million dollar position, just to make back a few thousand dollars. That's just fucking the wrong way to do it. Okay, so I've been telling the team, I've been very good lately at stopping out. You, you think I want to take a three thousand dollar loss after being up fucking two grand? But I had to, because three thousand dollars is only a day of work for me, and I can make that back. But if I started fighting, and if that stock. And then VC or GMDA went up to $10, I'd be broke, all right? And I, I'd be losing my max, and I still have my max uh, daily loss on. So I'd be okay, but at the same time, I would not be up right now. I'd be fighting this shit, and who knows, man? Who knows, I think it went up. So the key, guys, once again, is you have to have a repeatable process. You cannot just wing this shit. Money, the p &L doesn't mean shit. I traded like garbage today. I traded like garbage. And I'm still up. That's because my process saved me. My process got me to have a max size where I don't fucking lose more than a day of work. My process had me stop out even though it was a $3,000 loss when I was up $2,000. Who the fuck could take that, right? That's a lot of fucking money actually. But it was all about my, my process. So I took the loss and I recovered back. Okay, no revenge trading. And to me, that was what I was very proud of. I, at the time, I was not very happy. I was fucking like an idiot, I'm pissed. But then when I look back, I was like, dude, I followed the process, I deviated, sure. But at least these other risk parameters saved my ass. You see, I call it layering. Layering your risk, okay? A lot of these guys have no concept of risk management. And that's why members don't learn shit and that's why people blow up. Risk management. It's not just putting a stop out there. Because you know what, man? You are not trusted as a human being just to have one parameter. You have to set up like 10 fences. <laughs> it's, it's like, I'm, I'm going to use a really exact example, but fuck, if you have a teenage fucking daughter who's hot and all these guys are trying to fucking break into a room, what are you going to do? You're just going to have a lock on the door? She's going to climb out the window. You see know what I'm saying? You have to have so many different parameters set in place fucking guard dog maybe two fences bars on her window take her phone away uh camera so whatever it may be because you, you know what man one is not enough so we have what's called layering risk i have a videos on this guys layering risk the proper way to take a loss and layering risk i call it layering risk stop losses max size max daily loss set at the broker level so that you do not fuck up yourself okay Back in the day, I had, a, I had a max loss in my head. That shit went out the window. And I, I hear guys do this. I hear guys call up the broker to take away the max daily loss. And then they get fucking killed. I just heard that the other week. <laughs> Someone told me they, they, they reached a max daily loss. And they called the fucking broker to remove it. And that, that never works. And so you have to have a bunch of different layers, okay? And so the broker actually has a max position size that you can call so that's another thing I maybe I, I wasn't so uh, clear about last time so not only can you do a max daily loss and I'll tell you how you can do the max daily loss guys there's two ways auto liquidate which in my opinion if you're a new trader maybe you should do that because what happens is this I've, I've been here before 
where I hit my max daily loss and then I just hold on to that loss because <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I can't trade anymore. And so I'm waiting for that fucking stock to drop so that I'm under my max daily loss so I can start adding more size to it. You see how stupid it is? Human beings are always trying to break whatever rule that you have and try to get away with it. And when you get away with breaking rules and bad habits is when you start to fucking become a horrible trader. Okay? Bad habits result because you are rewarded for the bad habit. If you got punished every time you broke a rule, I guarantee you, you're not going to break that rule. But it's because we got away with breaking the rule all the fucking time. Except that one last time you blow up. That's why. And so that's why you have to sit down each after each major loss, guys. Even before this, after, when you get back to your trading desk, after, you get, after my IG Live, sit down and build these fences. Risk management is the only way you will survive. Even after 20 years of trading, all you take is one dumbass thing. Look at those guys getting killed on oil. So shit like that, right? Beyond Meat, Tilray. All it takes is one, one slip. So go back, set up these parameters around your account, call the broker up and say, let me only have $1,000 max loss a day. Auto liquidate for me, please. Because I'm not trusted to liquidate myself. Because I'm going to fucking freeze. And then hold the losing position. Hoping it goes back in my favor. Number two. Call the broker. Set a max size. There's no reason you should have infinite max size. Because having a max. No, no max size is going to have you. Keep adding to a loser over and over. Having a max size is like giving a kid an allowance. With an allowance, he can budget himself. Knowing that you only can do 2,000 shares, you have now <clears throat> are now pre-planning your entries. But if you have an unlimited number of size to add, I'm just gonna add here, add here, add here. So max size is just as important in my opinion because with a proper max size, you should not be able to hit your max loss unless you are stupid, really stupid or very unfortunate. Okay, so if you properly do a max size, you won't hit your max loss. If you do, because you, you may be size too big, so size down. So all this can be done at the broker level so that, you know, it, all this is removed from you because humans are not to be trusted, right guys? So that's number two. Number three is use hard stops. Have a habit of using hard stops. And that's, that. you know, those three things. Well, even though you lose, it won't kill you. It's like putting a seatbelt on, like Alex says. Put a seatbelt on. It may crack your rib and it'll fucking hurt, but you're not gonna fall out of the car and get ran over and you break your neck. So these are all the risk parameters, okay? <clears throat> because even like a guy like today, been training for fucking so long, the moment that NVC <clears throat> went from nine dollars to ten sixty, I was like, I was, I was doubting every fucking trade after that, guys. I was like, holy fuck. GMDA is going to go up to $10. Uh, must exit. So that's why I lost on these. But then when I calmed down, when NNVC went back down, I calmed down. I looked at my p and I was like, it's not that bad. I'm, you know, the, the day just started. And so I slowly worked my, back my, you know, worked back my fucking account. So here I am. I'm up 3000 but I felt like I traded like shit. So once again, guys, it's not the money. It's how you traded. Okay. There's days I traded so well, but my P&L was so shitty. And that's the way that it, it works, right? Like yesterday, I traded so fucking well, but my, my P&L was fucking little. <laughs> I think I was up 37 or four grand, four grand yesterday, but, uh, but I was like, fuck, I look back, I should be up 10 grand, but you know, it didn't happen. Today I traded like shit and I still got paid. That's because I was not rewarded, guys. When, when you look at the P&L today, I fucked up, I was not rewarded. What I did was I did the proper process of risk management. My trading sucked. So basically there's two components of trading, right? <clears throat> there's the execution part. And then there's a the risk management part. So I executed the shit like dog crap. I had FOMO, I executed all wrong. But what saved me was risk management. Proper risk management, which means proper sizing. I had a max size. <clears throat> it means stopping out at certain places. Even though I took a loss, it was a manageable loss, and that's how we recovered, guys. So that's how you can fucking save yourself. 
you can save yourself two ways. If you had a shitty entry like I did, you can save yourself with proper risk management. If you have shitty risk management, at least have very, very good entries. Because <laughs> if you wait for the outer lines, you know, your shitty risk entry will be saved because you hopefully you won't have to fucking stop out. But you have to have both skills if you want to continue as a good day trader, guys. Whew. All right. That was pretty much uh, my morning. Uh, anything else? At least any questions, guys? You, anybody want to come on? Missing anything else, Alex? Because I think that was key, man. The, the, the key, once again, you know, is the risk management. We always preach about this because we, a lot of people blow up their accounts. We teach you proper entries. We teach you proper risk management. It's up to you, the disciplined person. Whew. All right, I can bring one person on and then we'll call it. Who, uh, anybody want to go on? Raise your hand say, I want to get on. I always say, man, it's like, you know, we are not perfect traders. When, when, when you see these gurus, they're posting a giant PL, they're posting all this shit. You know, the, the mindset, the process is more important. A lot of these guys really do not have a process. You know, they just have a lot of money. But the thing is, it works for them. They're, they're experienced. I'm not saying they're bad traders. It works for them. The problem is, if you're teaching someone, a new trader, it does not going to work for you. It's not going to work for them. It may work for you. So, the only way it works is you have a repeatable process that you can fucking, you know, keep doing every day. And that's where MIC is, man. Uh, there's so many guys following, and girls following the, the process, and it works. I am in. Okay, I'm going to bring a random here. Uncle Vic. And always remember, guys, tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. You don't have to make all your money in one day. Hey, what's up, my friend? Hey, Bao. Hi. Um, thanks a lot for having me. Tell everybody your name and where you're from and all that good stuff, man. So I am Vic. Um, I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm a physician. And I uh, joined MIC like two months ago. Oh, you're Vic. What's up? The guy, the guy on the horse. <laughs> Is that the horse? <laughs> it's it's actually a bull. Um, it it was from a place in Nashville. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's almost allegorical. I was trying to ride a bull, and that was the time I started. Uh, I joined MIC and started trading. Oh wow, this is cool, man. Cause I see you all over MIC. Yeah, you ask a lot of questions, and uh, you know, good questions, and you try to learn every day. So that's awesome, man. I can, I, you know, that's a good job. So, uh, and you're you're a doctor. Um, you- yes, Bob. Yes, I am a doctor. I, uh, I, I'm from India, did my residency fellowship here and just uh, became a physician like three years ago, like a real attending physician. I'm done with my training now. I'm an ICU physician. Wow. So how's the, the, the Corona situation in Arkansas, man? You okay? D- don't even ask. Don't okay, even ask. Now. It's man. bad, like really bad. <laughs> okay. So hopefully training will be better. <laughs> you yeah, know, safer. I- It'll be safer at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Being ICU, it's become worse for me for the last three months. So I keep getting FOMO. I see people trading all the time and I'm mostly at work. Um, okay. And I, uh, first thing that I would like to say is uh, I was in a previous chat room before this and I learned, but the pace was super slow. Like with MIC, two of the biggest things that I have noticed is one, you have access to the moderators and it's, I can't even tell you how big an edge and help this is. And if you are a short seller, I see you bow like giving your nuggets of wisdom the whole day. Like even if I've had a bad day, I know the reasons why. Because I can look back, look at the chart, see what you traded. And if I just look at the charts and the videos, most of the questions are answered. Correct. That's um, awesome. How long have you been trading? And how long you joined? Been, I joined MIC February, mid-February. Um, joined as a monthly because I was very skeptical. I was already a part of a chat room. I had signed up for a year and it was kind of expensive. And then I just turned to annual. No, I actually turned to lifetime within two weeks. 
That, yeah, that, that's what I noticed. So tell, tell us, like, what made you – what was the decision? Just two weeks. So what, what was the reason? This, yeah. So before this, I was kind of – so I was part of another chat room for, like, a, like eight months. And what everybody did, I did the same. You, you know, you buy low and sell high, right? Never works <laughs> can, out. Uh, don't, don't. Can you get the initials of the chat room? I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> don't tell the chat room name. We don't want to talk about bad by anybody else. Just the initials. Actually, <laughs> actually, I wouldn't even say it was bad. I think sometimes a lot of chat rooms get bad rep because that is the first one that you join. You have a lot of bad habits and you want to blame it on somebody. So I started, so I actually, um, I lost a good chunk. I mean, almost close to 15K in the first six months. Thankfully, I'm a physician. I could like reload my account. Um, I made some of it um, in January. And then I just got really scared. I made almost 80% of it in January because I started shorting. I was like, okay, I'm losing everything longing. If I start doing the reverse, will that work? I didn't even know if this was a... <laughs> you just try everything possible. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And then this chat room, actually, there is a guy, I don't know if you, you probably know him, Michael Good. He's oh, always, oh. he's always talking about you. So he's like, why don't you go to Insta, look at Modern Rock. This is the guy to follow. And then I listened to uh, Be The Trader podcast and they had uh, Tom Diesel on. So I went on the internet for two days, day and night. I was just looking both of you guys up, reading as much as I could. And then I reached out to Michael Good. And he's like, yeah, he's a great guy. I really trust him as a trader at that. And then somebody referred me to Alex. So then I looked at these free webinars that Alex gave with Dante Vincent. So I'm like, okay, all three of these guys who have these great letters of recommendation, they are in one, one chat room. I should probably just try it. So I went in as monthly, looked at all the videos for two weeks. And, and I don't know if you know that, one of my really close friends who got me into trading I have I had him also sign up as a as an annual member. So now what's both his of name us in chat room? What's his name in chat? What's his name in the chat? He is Khan eighty four. Oh okay. He's he's not super active. He's an engineer, so I mean, and and he has family. I mean, I have family too. He's just a little more busy. Right. Um. So I went through most of the videos. And so far, my journey, the biggest problem is I make money, but my risk management is so poor. So I have like sometimes 10 days of green streaks and then yes. I get super, super confident. Yes. And then I feel like I own the market. And that is the day when I, when I'm like, Oh, and that's the day I don't put in hard stops. And it's, it's almost become a pattern. And I've been talking to Austin and Tosh and they go like, dude, you already know what to do. We don't even know what to offer you at this point. <laughs> yeah. Cause I remember that day you, you, you told me you lost it back and you're like, Val, help me. I have no self-control. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I, I, unless I'm there kicking your butt, I don't know how else I can help you. You know, you have to just make the habit because you know what it is, man? You're like me. What happens is this. It's money doesn't really mean much because you make too much money and you can reload it. And so it becomes kind of like entertainment. But at a certain point, the entertainment gets too expensive. And I don't want it to, to get to that point for you. You know I, I agree, Bao. It's almost like you where I want to be like, okay, if the stock's high is 490, that's what I want to nail. I don't care like if I, you know, if I don't, if I don't exactly money and you're right. I, but I definitely would like to make money. It's, it's just like ego comes in the way all the time. You, now I have stopped focusing since yesterday on first day runners that are low float. I'm going yes. to just follow the MIC strategy because what is happening for the last week I lose money during the day from these first day runners. And at the afternoon, I come back for VWAP rejections and then I make back that money. So okay, I'm like, so if I just take the morning out, <laughs> I, can, I can just make money. Because the morning you're breaking the rules. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It comes um, down to that. It's like, hey man, you are basically trying to reinvent the wheel that me and Alex have lost a million dollars doing already. So we don't want you to do that. So that's why the rules come from, right? The rules come from because I was like you, my friend. I was messing around, giving back so much money. Yeah. I'm still green, but at the end of the day, I'm like, dude, each day I'm giving back $2,000. Over the course of a year, of course, in five years, that's a lot of money. If every day you're giving back the money, right? And so, I agree. I, I agree with you. So now, hard stops, I hope you're using them more. <laughs> I'm actually following your theory, Bao, of uh, outer lines. If okay. I don't hit, I pass. Because my hard stop game still sucks. It's like I, I don't want to take that loss. So I'm like, first, I'll define my line. 
and get within 20 to 30 cents of that line and if i can't then that's fine losing 30 that's cents it. is always easy um so yeah and i'm reading your commentary i mean it's it's so easy if you would just listen to you guys it's so easy i mean it's not easy i shouldn't say it's easy it's simple if you just listen to you guys Correct. outer lines or pass that's it that's it and that's and, that's and, why pay is successful i think that i don't, I don't want to be sexist but females have much better discipline than guys me and you have no discipline <laughs> that's why you know <laughs> Yeah, Maybe. Uh, like like Alex says, we we think with our dicks, and it's just it's just <laughs> it's, it's always the, the ego. Yep, it's the male to touch one. I I know how can I be wrong? I'm the best. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I I keep saying that. That this is why I do these IG lives, Nick, because I want to humble myself too. I want to tell the world that I fuck up. I'm not the best. I'm not perfect. But just because you're not the best, just because you fuck up, still does not mean that you cannot make money. I make money every day even though I fuck up. I'm just very aware of my faults now. So if you are aware of your faults, it's like a doctor, right? Sometimes you have a disease, but you can't cure it. But you can cure, treat the symptoms or, or, you know, that's what it is. Sometimes, so, so having hard stop, having waiting for the outer lines, I'm still going to have FOMO for the rest of my life. It's still going to be so painful. But at least I can help the treatment. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. So and I remember, right. I remember, Bao, last time when I sent you that message, that was actually a lot of tough love when you were like, if you don't have self-control, just, just turn the thing down and walk away. That's what you've got to do sometimes. And that, I think, helps because today I did real good on, uh, what was that ticker? CBY or whatever it C-B-A-Y? was. Like, CBAY? CBAY. So I, I, did, I channel traded it like you. 460 cover 430 and then 430 cover 415 and just kept on recycling. Yep. And then I'm like, dude, it's it's 10.30 Eastern. I should just go away. I went away what? and the thing squeezed. <laughs> and now it's at 4.90. Oh, shit. If you did that, you would get back all your gains and be red. <laughs> My last channel trade was 4.60 covered at 4.51. I'm like, because I think somewhere you mentioned if the stock is green above VWAP, that you just take your money and run. Take your money and run and just keep re- rinse and repeating. Yep, um, yep. So... I think we just need to keep listening to you over and over till it becomes a part of. And I think you also said, you said if you want to make as much money as a doctor, you have to put in the hard work. And I've only been doing this for, I don't know, like three months now, maybe four. So I probably just had two high hopes. And you come in thinking, oh, because we see you, I see you, I see you and Alex and James. And you guys are quick. So I tried doing that. And I'm like, dude, this is not for me right now. I just play backside. I am not fast enough. And it's humbling. It's humbling to know. And I guess you learn a lot about yourself. But MIC, the best decision one can make. And I mean, you can get all of your, uh, I guess, all of your membership fee probably, I think, within the first month if we just listen to you. Um, yep. We have a and, chat. Li- we have a watch list. Do you, do you watch? Do you use that watch list to buy? Yeah, I have, you- I have religiously. I spoke to Tom Diesel three weeks ago and he was like, dude, I think you've got it. But just don't overthink. Just follow the watch list. Because Bao, Alex, and Tosh go over this. And this is almost like 30 years of experience. So don't reinvent the wheel. And that's what I've been focusing on for the last three weeks. Um, slowly getting better. Uh, but yeah. I, 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 think, I think you do well. The problem you have is the same problem that a lot of people have. is the over trading. You make your money and then you give it back on stupid shit. And you're like, you I'm going so stupid. Yes. And, and, yeah. and you talk about mental capital. At the end of the day, you have a headache and you're depressed and you're like, dude, I don't even know if I should be doing this versus just yep. walking away at like 1030. Yeah. How many times have we been up and just wish we, the electricity went down so we cannot fucking trade? <laughs> this is why I'm doing these walks, my friend. So, you know, you know this. You have to get into a routine. You have to get in a routine. And the routine cannot be involved you sitting there because you, you, we cannot be trusted. It's like we are alcoholics. And trying to keep staying at the bar. <laughs> sometimes With you. you have to fucking walk away. You know what, man? I drink a lot. And sometimes, you know, the curfew is like 1 o'clock or 2 a.m. That you have the bar closed. If, if there was no time, I might be there all day, all night. <laughs> Same thing with these rules, these zombie rules. You have to fucking walk away. And that's why you should get a tab. You should find a hobby. Do something. So that you can just remove yourself. Go work out. Anything except be next to the computer. 
And I have one of these, Bao. I don't even have time. Sometimes in my off time, I'm doing these stupid things, and my wife goes like, "If you're already done up on the day, your game is done. Like, do something else. Like, you don't, you're not even doing this for money. So why are you even stuck with this?" It's But a, I'm learning. It's the FOMO, man. It's like, oh my god, I could make more money. I could make more money. It's not the money. It's just that I think the dopamine. We like the excitement. It feels so good when we nail a trade, and we need that constant. Don't put me in fix. <laughs> But I'm trying to just like I'm trying to like I think you and Alex both have mentioned this. If trading doesn't seem boring to you, you're not doing something right. So I'm trying to work on that now. To just keep it very boring. I, I, that, I that's my biggest struggle. To be honest, my friend, my biggest struggle is trying to make trading after 15 years still exciting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because after a while, the money really doesn't matter. Me making another couple thousand dollars is not going to change my life, but it's that fix that I need. Just the feeling of like, because I'm so used to that. Because you know, you I guess it's kind of like that what gamblers feel like, and so, so it's it's a very dangerous thing. And it, it, it's because there's two types of people, man. You, me, and you are very blessed, but you make enough money where this is not going to change your life, but it, it can change your life and it'll make you very happy. But you don't. Needed enough, like some of these other people. So there's like two extremes, okay? One side is if you need the money too much, you are going to fuck up, because if if you worried about every little dollar that you lose because you cannot afford to pay rent, you are going to not properly trade, right? Right? But if you don't care about the money, and you just want the excitement, you're gonna lose too. So somewhere in the middle is a balance between an aggressive person that wants to trade, but knowing that. Hey man, this this money is important. You know, if if it's not important, then I'm gonna just so so I keep telling everybody: you make a goal where each week maybe your goal is to take out five thousand dollars. I'm just making up a number, right? And so you can equate it to something real life because now you're used to getting five thousand dollars back every week, and if you don't have that, you're gonna go, oh my god, and you can tell yourself, hey, I'm not gonna go spend anything, and I'm gonna only spend. On fun, if I make money, and so in that way, it kind of makes you want to trade well because you're like, I cannot afford to lose this because this week I'm supposed, to, I am so close to withdrawing five thousand dollars. Otherwise, I don't go out for the day <laughs> or the week, yeah, right? I I so, agree yeah. with you, Bao. I yes, one hundred percent. And MIC has been super. I mean, it's you feel like such a community. I have, I did not feel alone all of these three months, and and people have really reached out. Even members have reached out when I put in my charts. They're like, dude, I feel your pain. I did the same stupid thing, so you don't feel as stupid, I guess. Um, but oh, it's so great, man. Yep. And, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm glad. Well, things are picking up, right? I hear you're progressing. You know what to do now, Vic. You know what to do. You just I don't know, Bao. I would like to believe. I don't know what to do. I will just robotically <laughs> just go through the motions. I don't think I know. Each day, each time I felt, okay, I got this. I know what to do. Next day, red day. Oh. So that's because I, uh, we go back to your trading plan. You know, maybe maybe your lines are off or something. So, so how about this, Vic? Right now, you're too worried about the money because you're not consistent yet. Lower your size so that you trade properly and not worry about the money. So a lot of the people they they want to make money right away. They're not okay with just trading small size to learn. But how can you make a thousand dollars a day unless you start making a hundred dollars a day first, right? Consistently. Agree. 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 One hundred percent. So everybody needs to size down, and it's. I know it's an ego thing. Trust me, man. I don't want to post my P and L because to me that's a very tiny P and L compared to what I used to trade. Sure. So it's very humbling. So that's the same thing. It's all relative, right? People think three thousand dollars is little. Some people think three thousand dollars is the, the the huge. You know, hundred dollars to a lot of people is a life changing money too. But the key is to make become consistent first with small size. Become consistent with a hundred dollars, and then you, the sky's the limit for you, right? But if you start too about. high, you're gonna build bad habits. You have to build good habits first and get to the groove. You know what I'm saying? Get into the mojo, the momentum. And the other thing that I've really learned is, if my first trade is red on the day, I get very. It's almost like you get into the ring, you get that punch, and then you don't know what to do. Yeah. And then it's just like downhill from there. So yeah, if I have my if my first trade is good, I can just sit there wait for the outer lines. That's But because, in my opinion, just... it's because you're not comfortable yet. You're still only three months into this, and you you have to make it like for me. Trading is like almost like a reflex. 
the ball comes to my face, I know I move. But if a baby sees a ball, get hit. <laughs> right? Yes. So yes, you have to lower your size and start doing it every day. So that becomes a reflex. So that you don't get spooked out when your first trade is red. Right now you're a baby and someone throw a ball at your head. It hits your head, you're gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's been happening. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with your advice. And that's what I'm working on. I'm really working on my entries and my executions. That's it. I, I don't even care about the money. I'm going to just size, size down. down. And, size yes. down. Size yeah. down. Learn the process. So you can make money for the first week, two weeks, and then do what Faye does. Size down. Become consistent. And start slowly add size. Don't add from 100 shares to 1,000 shares. Go from 100 to 200 to 500, right? Slowly and methodically. To- I'm also refining my process. Like at this point in my process, if a stock is not up more than a hundred percent on the day, the float is not greater than at least five to seven million. Then I just let it be because I I don't know what it can do. Um, and sometimes they can really squeeze. So it's like really outer lines float less than five million. This one CBAY was confident because I was like, it's a sixty million float. They can't squeeze me to the moon just like that. But and, the uh, thing is, uh, it's high institutional ownership. Yeah. That's yeah, I had that in mind, but I was like, and that's why I walked away at 10.30. I was like, now they can do whatever they want. I've had my play. Correct. So, so but you, you, but you know what happened? Now you're more experienced. So, each, so now you can refine your process. So you're now learning. So that's my whole point. Take your time. You know, you, it's, like, it's like going through doctor uh, school for, for medicine. in 12 years. It's not like one year I can become a doctor. I, I couldn't agree more, Bao. And you know what? I had this great trade on CBAY. So I left a fantasy order on Mark at 250 and then it got filled. Then I added some more and then I almost made as much money on Mark as I made on CBAY. So it just kind of just, you know, for me, it either goes up or it snowballs down. So I'm learning, I'm learning about myself. I think that's also what we learn through trading. Correct. So, and that's, that's why I think you need, uh, people need a trading community. People think they can trade on their own. It's very difficult because it's not only the strategies, the technical but it's all the emotional part that you need the support on. Okay. So that, that's I, the key with community, guys. So the guys out there, oh, I don't need it. I've been trained for 10 years. I've been training for five years. But are you profitable? Are you consistent? I see all these guys that have ego that said, I've been doing this for so long, but they're still not profitable. Sometimes you have to just say, I need help. Same thing with a doctor. You're a doctor. Like, I, I hate going to the doctor, but sometimes I, fuck, I need to go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Even as a physician, Bao, um, I am always speaking to my senior colleagues um, because there are patterns, there are things that I haven't seen. And there is actually something that all of us should look up. It's called the Danning Kruger curve. It shows how people, when they don't know anything, the confidence is 100%. Once they oh, yeah. start knowing, it goes <laughs> down to 60%. And once you become an expert, the highest it will go up to is 70%. That's like so, me right now. I don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So I'm. It's just a humbling experience, and I look at guys like you. So initially, I tried to emulate in, emulate you, and then I'm like, yeah, it's just it's bow because you think I can do it too. You just make it look so easy. I'm like, yeah, I can do this too, and I'm like, no, not really. I, I, I need time. And that's why I do these lives to show people that it is really not easy. It is simple. You're right. You know, you, we have a process. If you follow that process, it works. But it's not easy. The easy is the mastery of yourself. Like you said, it's a, you learn a lot about yourself during this process. So. Yeah, trading it, for me is a spiritual process. And I'm, I'm learning so much about myself every day. Well, thanks, Vic. Thanks, Bao. Thank you, MIC, for everything. And people who haven't joined, I would say just join. You won't be disappointed. And it's almost like a money-back guarantee because you will make back your money uh, that you put in. Hey, stay safe. Thank you for your service on the front lines, man. I know it's tough. Stay safe, my friend. All right. We'll see you in the room. Thanks, Vic. Sure. Bye. Well, that was unexpected. That was the first time I spoke to Vic. And I want to end it with this. Alex and I always say this, guys. If you're trying to make doctor, lawyer wages, and you're trying to think that you can do this within a month, it's like, how unrealistic is that, right? Anything that is worth it, it takes time, guys. You know, here we are making doctor wages, lawyer wages, where it may be. It's not overnight. It's never going to be overnight because if it's overnight, everybody will be doing it. It's very difficult, but it's not impossible. We have a process around proven strategies. The only missing variable is you. That's why we're trying to tell you. We've done the work for you. Shorten the learning curve, everything. 
It's up to you guys, okay? And so you imagine if you don't join, how hard it is. Even if you know the best strategies, where MIC teaches you the best strategies, people still lose. I still lose because I can't control my own FOMO and emotions. What? How can you expect to, to even fucking learn about what the proper strategies is if you're always combating with your emotions, right, guys? So that's what we said, man. You join not to fucking learn, but basically because to learn from my mistakes. Alex and I have made so many mistakes, and that's pretty much what the tuition is. All right, guys. We'll see you back in uh, on the roof. Have a good day.